Ladies and gentlemen, welcome uh, to the very first impact transfer, zero project impact transfer uh, panel. Uh, it's a world premiere and you are all, all really welcome to be with us. Um, uh, it's the very first uh, accelerating con co concept of social innovators in the disability field in the whole world. Can you imagine how important this event is? Uh, and it is one of the most important developments of Zero Project. And I'm so happy and so thankful that you all are here. <clears throat> Let me, at the very beginning, thank my friends from Ashoka so much. Uh, Alex Kesslering, uh, you were the very, you, 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 the very first guy uh, taking care of uh, building up this uh, impact transfer. <coughs> and of course, also uh, Luik uh, van Kutzem, uh, who will lead this uh, event uh, today. And I really want to thank you and the whole team of Ashoka Austria, Ashoka Worldwide, the Globalizer. All those guys and professionals and experts are standing behind uh, impact transfer. Isn't that fantastic? And today we will uh, see 10 selected innovators uh, and they were uh, helped and promoted so far for a period of almost half a year uh, to give you an impression, uh, something about their projects and they want to scale up their ideas internationally. And therefore what is uh, special fascinating for me is, and thank you so much, for the very first foundations also joining the conference. Thank you for POSIS uh, Foundation, uh, Corona Foundation, and some others, uh, that we are now trying to extend our network from uh, uh, experts in the, in, the, in the social business and the NGO organization <coughs> and officials and innovators to enlarge it to mentors, and I see a couple of mentors here, and thank you so much for mentoring pro bono in this project, otherwise we couldn't have the possibility to do. Thank you. And also potential financiers. And we all together can change the world, and therefore we are together. Uh, and welcome therefore, but please be part of this a fantastic innovation uh, we will have and please go out in, into the world and help us to change the world and to help people with disability through innovations. Thank you. Now the most important guy today is Luik. It's, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Martin. Uh, I'm certainly not the most important guy. The most important are the 10 people who will be presenting their innovations uh, in a couple, a couple minutes. Um, my name is Loïc Van Kutsem, and I work for Ashoka, um, and I have the privilege to be coordinating this Zero Project Impact Transfer Program um, that, we, that we indeed started this year uh, with a great team uh, of colleagues, mentors, coaches, other stakeholders involved in this overall program. Um, we will come back to it during our panel discussion, um, but uh, the goal of impact transfer is to support proven innovations um, uh, to scale, replicate what they do in other geographies with the right partners to help them do so. Um, and this is very much also the mission of Ashoka. As you might know, Ashoka is the leading global community of social entrepreneurs. We also call them change makers. Um, we have been selecting and supporting over 3,500 of these change makers um, since 1981. Um, and we at Ashoka really believe 
as you do if you're in this room, I think about impact at scale. Um, there's a lot of innovation out there um, and there's still a big potential to spread what works. Um, not necessarily grow the organizations, but make sure that what works and its impact can be replicated and adapted to the local context with the right networks, partners, and collaborations. And this is very much what we have been also doing over the last months, very intensively working together with 10 of the innovative practices that have been selected this year um, to help them define their replication strategy. Um, so they are ready, um, but they need you now. Um, they need your support to make this happen, um, to pick up their work and adapt it to your local reality, to partner up and to maximize the impact of these innovations that have proven to, to work already. Um, we will start with a panel discussion, um, and from there, uh, each of these 10 innovations uh, have been invited to offer you their gift, uh, explain you what they do, um, how they would like to grow, to replicate their impact, and what they would need from partners like yourselves. Um, and they have been invited to do this in four minutes. Um, ten innovations, four minutes, ten gifts for you today, and hopefully ten opportunities for you to collaborate, be inspired, and maximize your impact. Um, so let me quickly introduce the panel uh, that we have today. We have Martin Essel, uh, who I guess no longer needs to be introduced, but is really the person thanks to whom we're all here today and we have been able to run this program. Um, so thank you very much, uh, Martin Essel, for, for all your support to Ashoka and to this program. <laughs> We have Georg Schön. Um, Georg is the managing director of Ashoka here in Austria and the creative mind behind most of what we do, um, as well as a, a passionate fisherman, among many other things. Um, we have Claudia Werneck, um, who's the, the founder of Escola de Gente, a fantastic innovative practice in Brazil, um, and she's also an Ashoka Fellow. Um, and we have Pedro Plata, uh, who's the coordinator of Escola de Gente um, in, in Brazil. Um, we would just like to have a bit of a conversation uh, in order to provide you a bit more information on, on why we run this program, Impact Transfer, what it is, and uh, what we would like it to look like in the future as well. Um, and my first question would be for, for you, Martin. Um, so the Impact Transfer is, is a, a collaboration between the Zero Project and Ashoka. Um, how did this come about? How did you, why? Are we doing this? Are you doing this together? Yeah. Uh, for almost 10 years now, the Zero Project uh, showcased in innovations in the field of disability to you, our global uh, community of supporters. With our new initiative, uh, Zero Project Impact Transfer, and our strategic partner, Ashoka, we want to go one step further. We want to enable Zero Project community to transfer and accelerate the most impactful innovations to new PLAs in the world. The Essel Foundation and Ashoka connect a long-lasting and strong relationship through three previous collaborations, like the donation of the Essel Social Prize to establish Ashoka Globalizer, the support uh, of the expansion of uh, Ashoka to Austria and Central and Eastern Europe, and last but not least, our joint office in the Houses of Philanthropy in Vienna. And therefore, we are very glad to bring now the best in both global networks together, the best of, the, both, of, of both global networks together, into this new initiative of the Zero Project Impact Transfer. Thank you, Martin. Georg, what's the perspective of Ashoka? How did you bump into the Zero Project and how did this come about? Good question. First of all, um, it's a great pleasure to be here, really. Um, how did this all start and why did we start this? Um, as Martin said, that uh, Schoker and the Essel Foundation has a long-standing relationship and a long-standing partnership behind us. But last year we came together to really create and co-create something new, something that goes at the core of what we believe 
we came together to really fuse our dreams and our visions at the end of the day. And what came out of it is actually something very obvious. Because the Zero Project is really the idle platform to transfer social innovations and to scale up the impact. Um, you are the global communities of practitioners and experts. You reach out every year around the world to identify the social innovations in the field. And you come together at this incredible conference to celebrate those innovations. So, our ambition is, and what drove us was, let's create a marketplace. Let's create a matchmaking marketplace, a platform uh, where um, people and organizations that are looking for fresh ideas to solve social problems get access, that's the topic of this year, get access to replicable solutions that are ready to deploy and ready to impact now. Um, so, everything is here. We just gave it a special spin, I would say. Okay, look forward to hearing more about it in a minute. Claudia, what's your perspective? As um, there have been many stakeholders from the Zero Project community involved in this initiative, you're, you're one of them. Um, how do you see the origin of this first edition of this program? Okay, good afternoon. Good afternoon. I, I spoke out of the microphone because I know here are some blind people is so they can know where I am. I am here. Good afternoon, it's a honor for me to be here, this partnership between Fundas ESL Foundation and Ashoka is extremely remarkable for me because the Ashoka and Zero Project Conference has have had a strong uh, impact in my life and in the life of my organization. My organization calls Escola de Gente, Escola de Gente, School of People. School of People in two senses. Literally, we educate young people to become agents of inclusion and young people with and without disability together, all the formation, uh, inclusive formation. And we are followers of people, I mean, we do not admit any kind of discrimination for any reason. I became a Shaka Fellow in 2002, 16 years before, and it was decisive for my life. I changed all my life. I had all the support from Ashoka. It is really it's a new life. And I have been to Zero Project conferences since 2014. And it has, it is bringing um, a very impact in my life. Every, every time I come back to my country, Brazil, I, it has a different meaning because I, I was here, I learned here, I, I contribute the, anyway for what happened here. And it, so uh, it is because these partners is extremely remarkable for me. Um, I consider Zero Project Conference one of the most important events about inclusion in the world. Congratulations. And a shock for me is like a mother, a daughter, a husband, a wife, etc. <laughs> Uh, why did I become a fellow Ashoka? Because I had an idea considered innovative, that is to educate young people with and without disability together. It was innovative. Sometimes it is still today. But um, I would like to thank Ashoka for trusting my belief. Because 16 years before, after, uh, I'm not here alone. I'm here with Pedro. Pedro is a young people. He was young people. And he participated in our first project after entering Ashoka. And Pedro today is here and it is coordinator of Escola de Gente, School of People, Escola de Gente. And he's working in a report of the accessibility of the Zero Project Conference. And I will divide, not divide, compare, 
Uh -huh. I forgot the word sharing. I will share. <laughs> I, this day cement with him. Thank you. <laughs> and congratulations for you. Thank you, Claudia, um, Georg and Martin. Um, the next question, what do, so we call this impact transfer, but what does transferring impact really mean and how does this program allow this? Georg. Very good question, Leuk. Um, so we really designed the Impact Transfer Zero project um, around the key success factors um, that um, enable scaling of social impact. So what are those key success factors? Uh, first, it needs a great solution that has a track record um, and um, can really scale internationally and has a proven impact model, as we say. Second, it needs people, it needs change makers that have the passion and the drive to really move it forward and an idea how to scale the impact. I wouldn't call it even plan, but a good idea and maybe someday a strategy. Third, there needs to be demand for that social innovation. So we really need to verify that that social innovation um, makes sense in a certain geography through the interaction with um, stakeholders, with funders, with partners around the world. And fourth, of course, wherever a new social innovation travels, there needs to be a person or an organization that picks it up. Um, we call that person or that organization a local implementer. They need somebody passionate to localize an international solution. So based on those success factors um, for scaling impact, we created impact transfer. So what did we do actually in the last year? Um, first, we looked at all the inno uh, innovations that came to the Zero Project, all the nominations, a very long list of nominations, as you know. Um, and we did a research. We looked at the ones um, that have a piece uh, not a business model, indeed, um, a, an impact model, and that might go international. Um, second, um, we um, took those solutions that we found um, and involved many of you that are today in the audience. We involved stakeholders to verify whether those solutions really make sense. Um, and third, um, we, at the end, of course, we selected um, the 10 um, that we brought together and we set up um, something that we call an incubation or acceleration program, a special support program um, that supported those initiatives over the last month, um, online and offline. Of course, we are a global network, so we had webinars around different topics like impact modeling, fundraising, um, funding models, um, and business models, and of course, replication strategies. Um, and the last two days was a very special uh, moment and I would really encourage you next year to come to that camp as well. We came together to build community, to foster storytelling and to get feedback on, our, um, on, on the replication strategies. So what you hear in a minute um, are those wonderful, incredible um, solutions uh, that are ready and have a replication strategy, a replication idea, and that will ask you very concrete, very concrete asks for support uh, and will provide you a lot of opportunities to collaborate. So go for it. Thank you, great. Martin, would you like to compliment on yes, that? Yes, um, you all are part of this hero project. And uh, with um, the Zero Project Impact Transfer, we provide you with the opportunity to become supporters. This is important, on the one hand, to find an innovation, to strengthen the innovators, like uh, Georg uh, <coughs> informed you. And now, the third very important part, and um, Zero Project can play a very important role out of this, to bring you together with supporters. Either it is mentors from the Ashoka side or from, from, from the Zero Project side, but on the other hand, also uh, people who can realize these innovations and scale it up in other countries. And this should be now in the future a fast growing marketplace where we can exchange ideas be inspired, but then, and we heard it also today from, from, from uh, Bill Trayton, we have to come to action. And if it is, would be possible that all of you take one single innovation, 
bring it to your country and to implement this successfully, we would be extremely strong helping other people with disabilities to uh, abolish barriers and to live a uh, sustainable and a um, uh, independent uh, life and, 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 uh, and to create an accessible uh, and barrier-free world. And this should be our target. Absolutely. Pedro, how did you or Escola de Gente benefit from, from the program? First of all, it's a honor for me to be here and I'm really happy to have the opportunity to share this panel with the woman that changed the way that I understand communication and changed my professional life and also especially changed the way that I see and I understand the concept of people. It, it, it was very strong in my life and it, it was also very strong in the lives of a lot of young people in my country. And it's a honor to, to share this panel with two organizations that has been that have been so important in the life of the organization that I coordinate today. Since I was a very young person, as Claudia said, actually I was a teenager, and uh, I was in the first project of Escola de Gente, and Ashoka was already there. Ashoka was already there supporting fellows and with content to make the program better. And, but there's something different in this program. There's, there's a distinct fact in this program. Uh, and for sure, it's because of Zero Project and ESO Foundation. It's the first time that we have been participating in a lot of programs in Ashoka, but it's actually the first time that we do learn about accessibility. It's very strong for us. We learned a lot with Ashoka, but we had never learned about accessibility. So, so that's why this program is so remarkable. And it just happened because there's a partnership between Zero Project and Ashoka, and also because of the quality of the webinars, of the, the courses, and of the innovative practice that was uh, selected and they will be presented here. Claudia, Claudia always tells us a story of a meeting in Ashoka that she was with a lot of fellows from Latin America, I think, and each fellow had to choose another fellow to exchange. And, and Claudia is really one of the most important fellows in Brazil, but no one wanted to learn about the rights of people with disability in that time. So 10 or, or 15 years later, it's, it's great to see that we, we walk to this moment that uh, we see people uh, innovating and thinking about accessibility. Great. Thank you, Pedro. One last question before we go to the, to the presentations. Um, what, what is the vision? So this was the first edition of this program. Um, what is the vision for the future? Uh, how would you like to see this evolve? Martin? Yeah, I, I of course, um, many of uh, you know me. I have a big vision. And uh, the big vision is uh, to implement the UN CRPD and nobody is left behind and we are have, living in a uh, barrier-free world. This is my vision. And I think that innovations can do this. So innovations, this uh, goal can be matched much faster than just making it better, a little better, or continuously uh, work. This is also very important, but we are these guys uh, who likes uh, innovations. And I have a big, big question to you. Today, at the 10th anniversary of Zero Project, we are giving you 10 gifts. Extremely interesting innovators. Please give them the, sh the chance to inspire yourself and help them to scale it up in your, uh, in, 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 in your uh, region. That would be great. But on the other hand, this is <coughs> just a pilot project. The very first year, of course, 
We took the most um, professional organization worldwide, uh, Ashoka, um, and asked them uh, whether they want to work together with us and join us and <laughs> to develop something together with us. But now we need your mandate to um, um, continue. We need your mandate to continue. With other words, after this event, after you have been inspired by 10 gifts, please give us information whether we should continue, whether we should strengthen it, or we shall forget it. And then my next question will be to you, can you give me a pledge to support this new ex um, possibility of um, the zero project impact transfer? And if we have enough pledges, people who want, really want to change the world through innovations, then we will follow and make it together with you uh, to a brilliant and very strong um, yeah, activity. And therefore, I ask you, please help us to fulfill this vision. Thank you. Sure, very briefly. Um, I just wanted to mention that I was very personally touched by your words, um, Claudia and Pedro. Um, and as we are all visionaries um, and we all believe that only the sky is the limit, um, I felt when I was sitting now on the podium um, that the power of the Zero Project, the global network of you, together with this global network and experiences of 3,600 Ashoka Fellows around the world, and all the networks that you unite and bring to this table, together we can create a, an incredible action community to replicate faster solutions, uh, that they impact faster, that they move faster. Um, and we stand at your side, um, of course, um, and we want to share our learnings for all of you who want to take up one of those solutions um, and who want to replicate them in your geographies. And finally, um, I would like to underline what Martin said. Um, this only works with all of us, with you. Um, so approach us, we will approach definitely you. Um, we are looking forward to your feedback and to, if we evolve this, to evolve this together and to really make it strong. Thank you. Yeah, well, from my opinion, the program has already succeed, yeah? But always when a program succeeding its first edition, it gains more and more responsibility for the following editions, yeah? And I think that our main challenge here is to keep this network working, yeah? Uh, everyone wants to learn and exchange experience, but the routine gets uh, in the way, yeah? It's like a train that uh, we don't know how to, to, to run away from it. So I think that our main challenge is how to keep this network working. And uh, well, we are here to contribute on it. Thank you very much to all four panelists. Uh, and I invite you to, you're most welcome to stay seated there if you wish or, or to find another spot. It's really as you want. Um, thank you. Um, So let us transition to the, the second part of our, of our forum um, and the presentation of these 10 innovations. Um, they, will, they cover the, the, the diversity of the sector. You will see very different solutions and innovations. Um, they also come from different countries. Uh, we have innovations from Indonesia, from Nepal, um, from Israel from Austria, from the US, and more. Um, and what really unites them, uh, I believe, is uh, of, of course their passion for what they do, um, but the fact that they have all really worked extremely hard in the last months to define how they could 
take the best parts of what they've been doing these last years and package this in order for others and partners to be able to pick it up and adapt it to their local context. Um, and this is exactly what we will be hearing right away. One message to you. Um, how can you play a role? Um, there are different ways. Um, we will have these 10 presentations now, right after the presentations. Um, we invite all of you to join us and go to the Impact Transfer Marketplace or Exhibition Area, which is right in front of room M1. So let's go there together and really don't hesitate to have conversations. Each solution has its, its booth, its stand with additional information and we'll be more than happy to answer your questions, explore opportunities to collaborate and find partnerships. Um, you have also received in your welcome packs um, one or two, maybe even more support cards. Um, these are cards you can use to indicate which project you would like to, you're interested in, and you would like to know more of, and you can go a bit further and indicate also your name, your email, and, and which type of support you could potentially be giving to these projects. Please fill this in throughout the afternoon, uh, throughout the forum, and you can drop these at the desks of the different solutions um, at the, in the exhibition area. If you're not able to join us right away, after the, the presentations to the exhibition area. Um, it's a pity, but it's, it's not too bad. Um, the stands will be there during three days, so you're most welcome to join at any time just throughout the conference, and we'll be happy to connect you or provide you more information. Um, great, so here we go. Um, your 10 gifts uh, for today, and your gift number one, um, please join me in welcoming Shanti Khagavan, founder of Enable India, and Shanti will be presenting their Enable Vani innovation. Thank you, Loic. That was nice. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Shanti Raghavan, a proud Ashoka Fellow, founder of Enable India. Enable India has been working for the last 18 years to impact livelihoods across 11 visibilities. We work primarily in India, where the population of persons with disability is larger than the total population of many countries put together. In this context, 70% of persons with disability are in rural and remote parts of the country and speaking 22 different languages. We have built different frameworks and models over the years to impact you know, more lives and we have scaled a lot, but we have found gaps in our scaling and that's what I want to talk to you about. How do you actually address the individual need of a person with disability when you're doing numbers? How do you actually have a sustained engagement with each person in their life cycle of needs? I think the problem is with a push service. You know, when we are pushing services to the person with disability and the family and the community. What we realized is that we need a pull model, a model where the community drives and owns the platform. And that is where we came up with Enable Wani. Enable Wani is a pull technology. It is community driven. It is mobile based, so it doesn't require the internet or a smartphone. It is actually a social network which is moderated and that is very important. It is free for the user. It is actually voice based, hence it can actually reach any part of the country. The user just gives a missed call. The platform calls the user back and gets connected. And via an interactive user response, you know, voice response, they're able to access different channels. Press two to listen to a channel. Press three for like, share. Uh, if you want to post a query, press five, you get connected, other users will actually give you information or you know, give you an uh, you know, answer to your query. This is the platform. Very simple, but let me tell you what has happened, the journey that we have had. Just imagine a person with, you know, who is an electrician you know, in a rural area, 
just got disabled. Why? Fell from an electric pole. This person would have been isolated before something like Enable Vani. Today, this person has an opportunity to get engaged in finding solutions for their own problems. Instead of actually being dependent and thinking that there is no life after uh, this disability, such a person can start their journey towards finding a new and alternate way of employment. Today we are seeing 26% of people actually getting access to jobs, and this number is increasing. And instead of being marginalized, such a person is actually becoming an active citizen, contributing to other users in the community. 98% of the content is user-generated. That was a staggering number. I don't even think you see this in Facebook or anywhere else. So what is the scale of our impact? Every minute, one user logs on to Enable Vani. In the last year and a half, without any publicity, any marketing, it has grown to 14 states, and we have received more than 365,000 calls, and it's growing every minute. So, we want to replicate, not only in India, we also want to replicate to other parts, uh, starting with our neighboring countries. We need a local partner who can moderate the content and actually do the strategic partnerships. We'll be the knowledge partner. And all we're looking for is a funder who will invest for the next three to five years, who understands our vision and understands the need for a community-driven platform, understands that sustained engagement is the answer, not the end journey, it is the life cycle of the needs of the person with disability that will get addressed. And we believe this will be a great and powerful tool for governments to leverage. Enable Vani will be a catalyst for persons with disability to reach full economic participation. And so I ask you all to join this journey and come to the booth whenever you can. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ashanti. Enable India, the Enable Vani innovation. Um, next on stage today will be Ilza Nulwan from the Surya Kanti Foundation in Indonesia. Um, and she will present their Child Development Monitoring Toolkit. Ilza. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Elsa Nelwan from the Surya Kanti Foundation, Indonesia. We are working with the child under five to prevent disability. Lack of knowledge of development of child development make children of higher risk of developmental delay and disability. That is the data we have down there. So what is the solution? We have the child monitoring toolkit consists of this simple pictorial home-based chart and a stimulation manual for the mother and the caregiver and the community. So it's an empowering tool. Even an illiterate mother can have a look and show where is the child from age, age and the five uh, developmental aspect. Once she saw that one aspect is behind, she can stimulate using the book, the stimulation manual. We have been doing this since 1996. So what we want what we want is reducing the impact of disability through early detection 
and intervention. What we do is adapt and provide easy to use developmental monitoring tool. What's the impact so far? We have produced 7,000 toolkits and then we have run more than 1,000 trainings for 3,600 people trained, reaching more than 80,000 mothers and 70% of the trained health worker said that the uh, toolkit is easy to implement to detect developmental delay early and intervene early so that even if disability will be there, uh, it, can be, uh, it can be reduced, the impact. Now, with this result, we would like to share by scaling it up. What we will do is, through our partners, funders, and implementers, we are going to train the trainer, and then we will reach the mother and the children. So this is our uh, needs, uh, looking for funders and implementers in other country, working with children under five, and we can support to adapt the monitoring tool to the local context and train local health workers and mothers. So this is for the future of our children. We will uh, be happy to meet you at our both. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ilza. And I indeed encourage you afterwards to discover their very simple toolkit at their stand. Um, Next on stage will be Kevin Hager, uh, Managing Director of Understood, powered by the National Center for Learning Disabilities in the US, uh, in partnership with 14 founding nonprofit partners. Kevin? Good afternoon. I'm Kevin Hager from understood.org. Understood is a comprehensive digital resource available on desktop and mobile for parents of children with learning and attention issues. Learning and attention issues like dyslexia and ADHD. These are issues that affect reading, writing, math, and organization, and they are brain-based. I was one of those kids. I sat in a classroom every day that wasn't designed for learners like me, with an invisible disability. And every single day, my self-confidence took a hit. Every day, I thought a little bit less of myself and what I could achieve. And unfortunately, there are hundreds of millions of children like me across the world. So, a few years ago, we started doing research. We talked with dozens of the top experts from around the world about learning and attention issues, and with 2,200 families affected by these issues. And here's what we learned. If you want to help a child with learning and attention issues, nothing is more powerful than a knowledgeable and confident adult in their corner. An advocate who knows how to help that child and is confident in their ability to do so. So that's why we created Understood. We partnered with 15 other nonprofits to create over 3,500 pieces of content, videos, slideshows, infographics, all of them personalized based on your child's issues and age. We want to be a guide for that parent on their journey with their child. We created five state-of-the-art tools. Think apps. One of them is called Through Your Child's Eyes. It shows you what it's like to have a learning or attention issue yourself through simulations. We also created a safe community online for parents to talk to one another, to share their stories and their experiences. And every single day we do a live event with one of those top experts from around the world so that any parent can log on and have their questions asked and answered. In the last three years since we launched, over 40 million people have used Understood. That is now more than two million people every month. 
But what's more important than that is that half of those parents tell us that their child is already doing better in school because they are using understood. 70% of those parents tell us that they are less stressed and more confident in their ability to help their child. Now, everything we created was originally for the United States, but here's the opportunity today. More than a million visitors every month are coming to Understood from other countries. So we think we can work with partners on the ground and champions to create resources specific to those countries. Now, right now, we're agnostic about what countries we work with. These are a list of the countries that we receive the most traffic from. But here's what we need to be successful, two things. One, a champion in that country, a funder or a government who believes in the potential of those one in five children and two, partners on the ground to help us identify what is specific about that country's education system, cultural norms, or ways that parents might engage with us. With those things, imagine what we can do to reach and impact more parents in other countries. So, here's what we need from the incredible people in this room. One, help us identify the right champions and partners. Some of you could be those champions. Many of you know champions and partners yourselves. Two, tell us what you think about our model. We'll be at our booth around the corner all day. We'd love to hear from you. And three, help us create a global conversation around learning and attention issues so that these one in five children don't have to continue to suffer in silence. Imagine what we can do together. Imagine the impact of helping those one in five children. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Gift number four for, for today's session um, is Betigheta G. Fortman and Yogendra Giri from the Kahuna Foundation. Um, and they will present you their Inspire to Care model. So imagine a poor and remote village in the high Himalaya of Nepal. Shankar, the boy you see in the photo, is a boy with born with cerebral palsy. Due to a prolonged delivery without the presence of a midwife, the boy survives. The parents feel ashamed and they, even, and they have no idea what to do with the boy. He can't walk, he lies in the bed, and he has severe spastic movements. Three years after the community leaders of the village where Shankar lives started the Inspire to Care program, he is able to walk, he can talk, he has friends, he goes to school, and he even turns out to be an inspirational speaker. One year ago, I attended a mass event where Shankar delivered a very powerful speech to the village leaders and all the inhabitants of his village. The moment I heard him speaking, I was touched because I realized that his life changed drastically because his community changed. The story of Shankar shows the strength of Inspire to Care model. And it also emphasizes our slogan saving children from disability one by one. And my name is Betteke de Gij Fortman and I am the director of the Dutch Philanthropic Fan Fund, Karuna Foundation. And this is Jogendra Giri, he is program director of Karuna Foundation Nepal. The reason why Karuna Foundation was established by a businessman is exactly because of Shankar. Children with a disability are always the poorest of the poor. And there is no system in place to make, make a reach to these children. And besides, many disabilities can be prevented, 70% even can be prevented, be, uh, by, through better and faster access to mother and child health care. And the reason why Karuna Foundation, the Netherlands, together with Karuna Foundation Nepal, started to replicate 
and to scale up Inspire to Care in Nepal is to inspire communities to take care and take responsibility of their own children and to do that with their own local resources. So now our solution. Inspire to Care is a disability inclusive development model which aims to prevent childhood disabilities and rehabilitation of persons with disability in their own community. To achieve these objectives, we have three intervention strategies. One, we strengthen maternal and child healthcare services of government health facility and increase service utilization using mobile technology. Second, community-based rehabilitation approach is used for the rehabilitation of persons with disability. And third, empower local community structures to make them able to lead the implementation. We have again three guiding principles. Cost sharing is one of them. Community pays 20% of cost in the first year, 50% in the second year, and 70% in the third year. Then after community takes whole responsibility to continue the program, they only need $4,000 to continue the program. Impact of this model is very impressive and encouraging. 62% disabilities have been, childhood disabilities have been prevented. 70% children with disability and their family members are living more better life. 80% villages are continuing this program even after the exit of Karuna Foundation. And this is the Inspire to Care model is highly cost effective model. Now, we are ready to replicate this model in whole Nepal and beyond. It needs well-defined principles and implementation guidelines to implement it in any context. We are ready to work together with you with our proven methodology. So we are very ambitious, and we are on the verge of replicating Inspire to Care in whole Nepal, together with the government of Nepal, and together with investors who are aligned in a consortium. There are already four investors on board, and we are st still looking for one more. On top of that, we are very eager to, sh to replicate our proven methodology to other rural communities in other parts of the world. And uh, what we would like to see is local, eager and learning organizations who are ready to take up Inspire to Care with their own funds and or with impact driven funders. So together with you, we would like to continue our journey to reach many more children, thousands more children like Shankar and to prevent children from having a disability. So finally, if you have children in your mind or in your heart like Shankar, and you would like to do something, then talk to us in our stand. Thank you, Beteke and Yogindri from Karuna Foundation. Um, we'll go for one more gift before we'll take a two minute uh, pause so that you can reflect on what you've heard and, 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 and take some notes potentially. Um, and then we'll go for the five remaining gifts. Our, our, our fifth person on stage uh, this evening is uh, today, uh, is Dr. Pooja Mukul from the Jaipur Foot Organization and she will present their amazing work remobilizing amputees. Good morning. I'm Dr. Pooja Mukul, the Technical Director of BMBSS Jaipur Foot Organization India. We are a non-governmental organization committed to remobilizing amputees. Our mission is to make artificial limbs available, accessible, and affordable. The number of amputees worldwide... Oh, can you just... Uh... Yeah, sorry. The number of amputees worldwide is rising at an alarming rate. More than one million people lose a limb every year. 
which means a new amputee is added to this population every 30 seconds. Now, 80% of the total amputee population in the world lives in the low and middle income countries. And the World Health Organization estimates this to be over 30 million. Ironically, all the research in prosthetics is directed towards the high income countries. The cutting edge technology available is cost prohibitive and ill-suited to the cultures and lifestyles of people in the low- and middle-income countries. Hence, 90% of amputees in the low- and middle-income countries do not have access to prosthetics. And without prosthetics, they are confined to their homes, and they are stripped of basic rights like access to food, education, health care, employment opportunities, and rights within the community. I hope I can do that now. Yeah. So with the, driven with a resolve to restore the mobility and dignity of our amputees, we decided to indigenize and innovate artificial limbs that were high performance, affordable, but suited to the socio-cultural, occupational, and environmental needs of our people. We designed the Jaipur foot, the foot you see in the corner. It is the only foot in the world that permits people to squat, sit cross-legged, negotiate uneven terrain, even climb trees. It costs $10 and is currently the most widely used prosthetic foot in the developing world. For people who lose their limbs from above the knee, in collaboration with the Stanford University and DREV, we designed the Jaipur Remotion Knee. It is a polycentric knee. And the Jaipur Knee featured in the Time magazine as one of the 50 best inventions of the world for 2009. Our technology is also known as the Rapid Fit Technology because from measurement taking to limb fitting, the time taken is just four to six hours. A patient crawls in the morning and walks on his own two feet in the evening. We have so far fitted over half a million amputees with artificial limbs in India and across 30 different countries that include Afghanistan and Iraq. And I was fortunate to be there myself to do it. Our replication strategy, you see, with staggering demand and paucity of services, there is a compelling need to disseminate technology and replicate services. Our strategy is two-staged. On identifying a local partner, first we conduct a pilot camp in their geography. It works like a case study where we learn whether the technology works or some design optimization is required. If, the, if it is clinically validated, we move on to the second stage where we train the local manpower in limb making and simultaneously, the local implementing partner sets up a prosthetic center. Now, in order to reach the 27 million people still waiting for artificial limbs, we need global partners to foster our global network. We need technical partners to help us make more effective prosthetics. And we need local implementing partners from geographies that have very high amputee population with poor excess. I implore you, please help us put people back on their feet. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pooja, from Jaipur Foot, for this very inspiring presentation. Um, we have five more innovations um, to hear from. Um, before we move forward, we just suggest a one minute pause. Don't leave us. It's just meant for you to take a deep breath and reflect on the five presentations you've just heard and potentially fill in the support card that you would have in your welcome pack or that will be distributed right now um, with ideas or how you could potentially contribute to these different innovations. And, and in one minute, we'll be back with the five next innovations. Thank you.
Welcome back. Um, take your seats. We have five more presentations coming up. And the next, the next person on stage is Melissa Malskoun, um, who's the founder and, and creative director of the Motion Light Lab at Gallaudet University. And um, she will present us their storybook creator innovation. Melissa. Great, here we go. Hello everyone. I am absolutely delighted and honored to be here to talk to you about the VL2 Storybook Creator, which was developed at Gallaudet University. Since its development, what we have focused on is advancing children's literacy so that they can become strong readers. And if you want to know why this is such an issue, it's because it is a global crisis. Deaf children are not reading, they're not writing, they're not consistently exposed to sign language. But it is critical that you understand just because they're not doing this doesn't mean that they can't. To fully understand the context of this, you have to understand that 90% of deaf people are born into hearing families. What this means is that a new parent finds out their child is deaf and find themselves in the unknown. If they don't know how to sign, they don't know how to communicate, and they need support, which is often not there. What typically happens is that people struggle to get resources, and all the while, this very young child is missing out on opportunities for linguistic exposure. And going to school is no guarantee, because only 3% of children get their education in sign language. In the rest of the world, what does this mean for how children can be expected to become proficient readers? If they're not exposed to this linguistic foundation, how can they start to build the building blocks that are necessary to map their thoughts to text and access the world? If they don't have this foundation, it means that deaf children who then grow into adults are at the margins of society. But we have a solution. Based on decades of research, what we know is that we can work together to make a change. The solution that we propose is the VL2 Storybook Creator. This is a platform that anyone can use to generate their own storybook apps. The platform is designed to create bilingual storybook apps. It's content flexible and supports a variety of languages. You have to understand that sign language is not universal. Every country has its own sign language. So it's key that you have people in local geographies be a part of making these storybook apps to ultimately benefit children. But in order to make these sign language resources, you have to engage the deaf adults in the deaf communities in your regions. Now, that said, we know that many deaf adults face struggles with gaining employment. They're unemployed or underemployed because of the educational challenges I just described to you. So we train deaf adults, we train the trainers to make these apps. We provide them with the digital skills that are needed in today's world so that they can have the confidence to gain employment in 21st century workplaces and have 21st century jobs and careers. For example, in video production, this is the equivalent of having an audio recording of one's voice to document language. This fosters an ecosystem of opportunities for adults that ultimately benefits children, creating an exchange of mutual support and provides support for deaf children's families. Our goal is to create a global digital library. We started working on this in 2012 and we've been steadily growing. We've seen the number of downloads grow daily, and we've already expanded to seven countries. But seven is just a small fraction of the number of countries in the world. We want to go global. 
and we've already seen an impact on the lives of children and their families. Families are able to have shared reading with their children. They're able to pass on cultural folk tales that are part of oral traditions that they don't currently have access to. And when they don't have access to that, they lack the connections to their families and cultures. These storybook apps provide ways to document cultures and share them in different ways to ensure that people can have the richest lives possible. So you might be wondering, what does this actually look like? What does a storybook app look like? So here are a few snippets of a couple of the apps we've created. Everything that you see here, from the artwork, to the person in the video, to the person who recorded the video, edited the video, the person who coded the program, all of this was done by deaf people. And this is groundbreaking, because we understand that the video is at the center of the app. That's where children get the information. And the text is presented on the same interface. This revolutionizes how we understand reading and digital literacy. As you can see, there's a number of storybook apps that we've developed, some of which are translations into other languages. So now, what do we do from here? You might be thinking about your own cultural context and families in your countries who are living the experience I described to you at the beginning. A new parent who has a new, new deaf newborn and they don't know what to do. You can take part in this. You can change the lives of these families, starting by partnering with us. And a partnership with us means tapping into Gallaudet University's global network of deaf communities around the world. <coughs> Funders or investors, certainly know that literacy is key to cultural participation. So partner with us so that we can create teams around the world and provide this same information and create impact. Thank you very much. Finally, I'd like to close with this video. I'd like to see children like this, deaf children actively engaged with learning. They are reading because they can. Thank you. Thank you, Melissa. Hello, the University, the storybook creator. Um, next will be Sharon Yezekel Oron from Betishi Shapiro presenting their fantastic inclusive playground model. Welcome, Sharon. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sharon yechezkel and I represent Beit Shapiro, um, a nonprofit based in Israel. And today I'd like to share with you our inclusive playground model. And since it's a bit difficult to bring a playground to a conference, I thought I'd share with you a short video to set the stage. <laughs> ב-23 באוגוסט 2010 הושק באירוע חגיגי בפארק חברים של בית איזי שפירא ברעננה גן המשחקים הנגיש הראשון מסוגו בישראל המותאם כולו לילדים עם מוגבלויות. כמעט הכל מתקן שמנו אותו פה והוא יכול לתפוס נכון ולהחזיק ולהיות בו לבד. מדהים. האירוע היה חלק ממיזם חינוכי משותף לעמותת סזמי וורקשופ, בית איזי שפירא וערוץ הופ. שמטרתו לחולל שינוי בתחום החינוך לסובלנות ושילוב ילדים עם צרכים מיוחדים בקהילה. המיזם החדש משלב פעילויות שטח ותוכנית חינוכית בגני הילדים בהשתתפות דמויות מהסדרה רחוב סומסום המשודרת בערוץ הופ. מה שאנחנו רואים כאן זה שותפות נדירה של שלושה גופים חזקים מאוד, ערוץ הופ, ססמי וורקשופ ובית איזי שפירא, והם מטמיעים בדור הצעיר והרך ביותר בישראל את התובנה שכל אדם יכול להשתלב בכל מקום ולהגיע לכל מקום. בהמשך לאירוע ההשקה צולמה כתבה מיוחדת ומרגשת בהשתתפות החבובה סיוון והילדה אנסטסיה שחלקה עם הצופים בבית את חוויותיה כילדה בעלת מוגבלויות. אז אולי ניסע לשם יחד? כן, יאללה. קדימה. <laughs> ‫אז 
So it all began in 2003 when families of children with disabilities approached Beit Shapiro and shared that they didn't have anywhere they could go to enjoy leisure time together as a family. When the families did go out in public, in addition to the physical barriers that they faced, they also faced social barriers in the forms of stigmas, stereotypes, and negative attitudes. All children deserve equal opportunities to take part in leisure and recreational activities within their community. Play is also a fundamental dimension of child development, but it also brings joy, as Daniela Bass said this morning. Inclusive play can bring about the realization of rights of children with disabilities, promoting their development and well-being, but also help change society, making it more inclusive for everyone. It's a really great slide, but still. <laughs> Beautiful child. Help, please. Thank you. So with this belief in mind, we developed the first inclusive playground in Israel, Friendship Park, launched in 2006. But we found that inclusion doesn't happen naturally. Left to themselves, children, often like adults, tend to stick to their own kind. Therefore, a physically accessible playground is not enough to ensure that children with and without disabilities actually play together. With a focus on social accessibility, targeting all children, their families, and community, we developed structured social and educational programs. For example, Rachel, who is a facilitator of ours with a physical disability, facilitates activities in the classroom and the playground throughout the school year to help children develop positive perceptions towards people with disabilities. Within Israel, replication of the Friendship Park model funded by the National Insurance Institute has required the implementation of both physical and social dimensions of the model. There are now over 30 such playgrounds all across Israel in both the Jewish and Arab communities. Following the successful pilot and scaling up in Israel, we're very interested in replicating the Friendship Park model overseas, focusing on the social and educational aspect. We have packaged over a decade's worth of knowledge and experience into three training workshops, which coupled with ongoing guidance and support can assist communities to establish truly inclusive public play spaces. The workshops, given at each location and individually tailored to the needs of the community, provide tools and know-how on one, the setting up of socially inclusive playground, two, providing develop, developing social and educational programs, and three, evaluating and operating the programs after implementation. We're looking for local implementers in different countries, funders and connectors, who share our vision and believe that social accessibility is critical for inclusion. So please visit our website for more information, and we're very much looking forward to connecting with you all at our booth and during the conference. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sharon, Petitie Chapuiro, and their inclusive playground model. Um, next, and number, gift number eight, if I'm counting correctly, um, is Valborga uh, Frölich, um, CEO of Atempo Capito, um, who partnered with the Austrian press agency to develop Top Easy, an easy language news solution. Welcome, Valborga. Thank you. Hello, everybody. I would like to start my gift with uh, some questions to you. First, who of you knows the name of the president of your country? Well, who knows roughly what's going on around the world in terms of politics? Quite good. Third question is a little bit tricky. Who of you is able to talk about Mr. Trump's great messages to the world? <laughs> Lucky you if you can. Obviously, you are well informed. You will be able to join the small talk sessions at the ongoing conference. You will bring in your own well-reflected position. Because being roughly informed about what's happening around the world 
helps feeling you comfortable and safe in terms of conversation. Many people feel the opposite. They feel uninformed, uncertain, confused, and dependent because they are not able to read and to understand daily news from quality media. And this is the case for 40% of the adults in Germany and Austria. It's awful, remember, these are some of the richest countries on the world. So how do we help to improve this situation? Every day we produce a news overview with roughly six stories in easy to read style. And we distribute this overview to various stakeholders. Up to now, 40,000 people use our service. This is nice. But we want more. In 2025, we want to enable at least 20 million people globally to read and understand daily news. Our goal is to significantly increase our impact by using as much media and newsletter channels as possible and by providing very easy access to the daily news via a helpful app. And to give you a picture of how our service works, we provided the daily news overview during this ongoing conference via our app. You just have to download our app for free and to scan the QR code on the flyer which you will receive when leaving this room. And I hope you will feel that this service will be fine for you. Currently, we are searching for media partners, policy makers, community builders, advisors and funders who have the potential to support the scaling up of our project. Support can be provided by various activities, like PR activities to make the service well known, another additional news in easy to read or sign language, investment to finance the upscaling process. Together, we will be able to change the world of information. So this is our invitation to you. Let's help people to get access to news which are not fake, which are not extremely manipulative, but still comprehensible for everybody. Are you ready for this vision? If yes, come to our stand. We will be happy to have you join with us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Valboga, um, Gapito, and the Austrian Press Agency, and very interested to replicate what they've been doing in other countries. Um, Please join me now in welcoming Danielle Kish, um, the founder of Visioneers. Um, and Danielle will be presenting his amazing Visioneering Freedom Innovation. Visioneering means Applying our vision, applying our vision to engineering positive change for ourselves and for others. The change we are engineering is about leveraging what blind people see to cultivate a shared vision of freedom among blind and sighted people in order to uh, develop 
what we would call uh, a joint vision of freedom and human growth. You don't need eyes to be a visioneer. Our blind students are mountain biking, hiking, playing all kinds of sports, just living freely and enjoying their lives. How are we different? We don't need others to see for us. We are seeing with our own vision. I am the first totally blind orientation and mobility specialist. They said I couldn't do it because you have to see to teach blind people how to be blind. I did it anyway. And now I train other blind instructors. One of them here in Austria, Juan Ruiz, set a Guinness World Record for bicycling totally blind through an unfamiliar obstacle course. You'll see this in my keynote on Friday. Now, let me show you how he did it. He had to avoid obstacles, obviously. You, pretend this is a, pretend this is a wall or an obstacle, and you have to keep me from running into it with your eyes closed. So everyone close your eyes. Close them tightly, don't peek. I'm going to make a sound. It's going to sound like this. But the sound is going to change as this object approaches me, and you have to say stop when you hear the object start to move with your eyes closed. Ready? Oh, well done. One more time. One more time. Eyes closed. Congratulations. Open your eyes. You'd make great blind people, all of you. <laughs> By using clicks, we can get information for hundreds of meters. It is a new way to see. A number of research projects have shown that people who are blind um, are in some ways redeploying the visual brain in such a way that they are truly seeing and appreciating the world around them and that that visual brain does light up. However, these immense capacities that are possible for blind people are not well known. What is also not well known is how much human capacity can be expanded for all of us. So let's find out. Let us visioneer an answer, starting right here in Austria, where we have already done successful trainings, training projects in every province, a public visioneers festival. a festival for freedom, for human growth, to launch a movement for empowering blind people to find and claim their freedom and to share this growth process, this vision of change for all to experience and benefit. Discovering new ways to see and bringing hidden human capacities into the light. We need your interest. Implementers who can mobilize communities, direct funding, opportunities to exchange resources with enterprise, corporations, and institutions. Besides Austria, we've served 39 countries. My textbook is being used in some of them. We've taught over 2,500 blind students, along with over 15,000 members of their families and communities, with media coverage reaching over 2 billion viewers. We've been busy. We want to be busier. We want to come to your countries. We want to come to you. Let's make 
those numbers grow into a new vision of freedom, respect, and empowerment that everyone can share. Come see us. Visit our website, visioneers.org. Check out our TED Talk. It was voted top 10 for 2015. Let's visioneer together. Thank you. Thank you very much, Danielle Visioneers, for this very inspiring presentation. Last but not least um, for today, we have Lara Schweller, um, coordinator of the community and access programs at the Museum of Modern Arts. Welcome, Lara. Hello, everyone. We have heard from so many wonderful and scalable solutions and I have two pieces of good news for you. As Loic shared, I am the last presentation for the day, and I am going to tell you how art can change the world for people with disabilities. I am honored to be here representing the Museum of Modern Art in New York, or MoMA for short. Cultural participation is a fundamental part of the human experience, and yet people with disabilities are often denied equal participation. We know that around the world, one in five people have a disability. We also know that 59% of those with disabilities are more likely than those without to not return to cultural institutions because of negative or unwelcoming experiences. Here in this image, we have a group of people with Alzheimer's disease and their care partners seated around a large Jackson Pollock painting in conversation. Research tells us that for 61% of people who visit museums, their number one reason for doing so is because it gives their life deeper meaning. And I know personally from the couple on the right, the reason that they come to our program year after year is because it gives them the opportunity to connect over a shared interest, art, and to continue to learn and grow together. At MoMA, we want to see a shift in the attitudes of cultural institutions in the way that they welcome people with disabilities. We are driving this change so that people with disabilities, their families, and their friends feel welcomed, feel valued, and feel that they are active participators in our cultural communities. We have created opportunities for people with disabilities to learn through gallery conversations, to create through art making studios, to connect over shared interests like this mother and daughter in our galleries, and to share voices, opinions, accomplishments through exhibitions of artwork created by people with disabilities on display at the museum like this young boy sharing his artwork in an exhibition. All of these programs don't happen on their own. They are facilitated by our staff that are well-trained and welcoming. We train over 250 staff members each year at MoMA across 12 departments and two campuses to ensure that people with disabilities will be welcome in every area of the museum. We have adapted our internal training methodology to bring it to cultural institutions around the world. And now we are ready to scale this training to bring it to an even larger audience. So what's our plan? MoMA will provide training in accessibility at a number of different levels of cost and engagement. Option one, we will provide free training resources like videos and written materials online that any institution can use with their staff. Option two, we will offer a low cost subscription to online webinars with our staff and additional online support. Option three, MoMA will travel to your institution to provide customized training for your staff and to help you create a strategic plan to implement accessibility at any and all levels of your institution. We will assist you in hosting a summit 
for area museums so that together in your region, you can create a new network of mutual support for accessibility. We want to empower cultural institutions to become more accessible, more welcoming, to build in new opportunities for revenue and donor support as they create programming for an aging population and a growing population of people with disabilities. We are here today to find new partners in cultural institutions who want to join us in opening their doors and in welcoming the millions of people worldwide with disabilities who want equal access to art and culture. Thank you, and I look forward to speaking with you more. Thank you very much, Lara. Can I ask for one last final applause for the whole group and these 10 innovations, which did a great job. Without further ado, I now invite, there's, this is the menu, there's, um, as Martin Essel said earlier on, um, the pledge or the encouragement for each of you to go back home with one innovation that you could bring back, adapt. This is a menu, there are 10 different options, 10 different types of innovations. Um, there's certainly at least one that you can support, connect, bring back, fund, implement. Um, please now, uh, let's leave this room and please join us at the exhibition uh, area, at the marketplace, right behind this room. Uh, we will follow the different solutions. We'll be at their stand. Get, go there, give them feedback, engage in conversations, explore collaboration opportunities either now or throughout the three days of the conference. Thank you very much.